I, there was a lot of things I didn't know about my life, which my mother, you know, wasn't able to divulge at the time for her own personal reasons. My mother, Patricia Gucci, and grandmother, Bruna Palombo, did not protect me. They did not shield me. They allowed it to happen. Gucci is not only a house of fashion, but it's also a house of horrors. She claims that her stepfather, Joseph Ruffalo, her from age six. They're still searching for an elderly man who went missing. If you've seen him or you think you know his whereabouts. Not only did they know about the abuse, they did nothing to stop it. She looks at you like, are you crazy? Be quiet, don't you? You know, she gets angry. Literally, my daughter can, can, uh, <laughs> can, you know. I had no one to protect me, no one to save me, and no one who did anything about it. everybody my name is Nadja aka the voodoo child and I am about to talk about something that I can't believe I didn't know about especially because I just did the Balenciaga video and I did such a deep dive on Balenciaga itself I don't know how I missed the Gucci scandal like I don't know how I missed it but we're gonna talk about it. there is an ongoing lawsuit and there has been some updates as of 2022 Let's just get into it. What made me even want to talk about this is I just saw a resurfaced clip from about two years ago um, from the beginning of the lawsuit, or I should say the initiation of the lawsuit. And it is from the great granddaughter of Gucci. Her name is Alexandra, and I'm just gonna let her say her accusations from her own mouth. Obviously, I can't put it all because YouTube, but I'm just gonna let I'm just gonna let her say it from her own mouth. My name is Alexandra Zarini. I am filing a lawsuit against my stepfather, mother, grandmother, and others because I was by my stepfather, Joseph Ruffalo, from the age of six years old. My mother, Patricia Gucci, and grandmother, Bruna Palombo, did not protect me. They did not shield me. They allowed it to happen. But I am coming forward publicly today because as hard as this is for me, I feel it is my duty to expose the misconceptions about child abuse and to raise awareness that every single day, we as a society are failing to protect the most vulnerable and innocent among us, our children. If you think this doesn't happen here in Beverly Hills, then you should know that my perpetrator still lives in California, spends time at the Bel Air Country Club and volunteers in your children's hospitals. This is not something that only happens to other families, in other neighborhoods or other countries. It is everywhere and happens to children in all countries, all states, all ethnic backgrounds and all neighborhoods. I'm also speaking out because when I was abused and assaulted, I had no one to protect me, no one to save me and no one who did anything about it. This is far too common. There needs to be accountability for those people who look away and who don't stop child sexual abuse from happening. That inaction is costing us lives and robbing children of their future. Once children have been abused, they will struggle to come forward because they believe they will be judged. But it is the perpetrators and those who protect them that need to be judged, not the survivors. Survivors of child abuse, myself included, will tell you that this is one of the worst things that can happen to you. You lose your childhood and you fight against the painful legacy abuse leaves with you your entire life. In my late teens and early twenties, I experimented with sex for a couple of years to help deal with the memories and the trauma of my abuse. It took me many years to become more grounded in who I was. And in some ways, I am one of the lucky ones. Talking about what happened to me saved my life. Without that communication, I would have been another statistic. A child who gets abused will have to live with this trauma their whole life. The average age a survivor comes forward is 52 years old. That is 34 years from the time they turn 18 to the time they are able to speak up about it. Statistically, there are as many as 50 million Americans today who have been through this abuse and many suffering in silence. 
If you are a celebrity, influencer, actor, politician, musician, educator, or a mother like me, or a father like my husband, fighting child sexual abuse needs to be your cause too. If you are in a position to raise awareness and help to protect just one child with your actions, then I'm asking you, emphatically, do whatever you can. I will both financially and personally commit as much as I can to this cause and have started a charitable foundation which has one clear mission, to end child sexual abuse, and which will benefit from any award from this lawsuit. There are already so many courageous and bold survivors and advocates out there, and I plan to spend the next few months reaching out to a broad range of existing organizations to see what the needs are and what the gaps are to determine how our foundation can help. But I already know the most important step starts with all of us talking about the crisis of child sexual abuse out loud. We all have a responsibility to use our platforms, our voices and our resources to protect our children and to end child abuse. Thank you. She was a victim of SA from her people within her rich family. And I really liked how she mentioned this isn't just a one race issue, one country issue, one, you know, like this is a problem. This is a problem. Now, human trafficking, child trafficking, that is not a conspiracy. So to hear Alexandra's story, I offer, I believe her. I believe her. This was pre-scandal. Like, I believe her 100%. Um, mainly because this is a common story amongst a lot of upper class children. You killed your father who was molesting you. Why did you kill your mother? On Thursday night before, uh, when there, in one of the explosions, I was running downstairs and I was crying. And my mother was on the couch and she had been drinking. And she said, what's wrong with you? And I said, nothing, nothing. You wouldn't understand. And she said, oh, I understand. What do you think? I'm stupid. And, and she told me that she knew, that she had known all my life what my father was doing. And it was like I didn't even know who she was anymore. I just saw dad and mom as the same person at that point. I, I saw them as, as a single person. And then I understand it happens amongst all children, doesn't matter what class and everything, right? We said that. But specifically when it comes to certain um, shames and tactics to keep people quiet, I believe her. And I do believe that her, the women in her family did know and that they just didn't speak up. I do feel like they did know. And another reason why I believe her is because unfortunately she also named her sister as getting abused as well. Um, and the sister was all for it. The sister was like, yes, this did happen to me. But as soon as she saw that Alexandra's lawsuit was going to also include her mother and her grandmother for not standing up for her, she immediately fell back and was like, no, I'm standing with Gucci, standing with my people. and." this is just me i really do feel like there is some programming and we all get programmed every one of us gets programmed by our parents or our guardians so please don't think i'm trying to like put no mental illness on this lady or nothing she was programmed to when it gets like heated like that nah i gotta stand by who i gotta stand by and i feel really bad for alexandra but she is being very brave i know that the abuse must have been so bad because it took her to be in her 20s to stop being abused by this man. Allegedly, according to Alexandra, this man was abusing her into her 20s. That means this person has this much control over you in adulthood. That is scary and that is a lot of power. That is not somebody to mess with. So I do believe that the mother and the grandmother knew. I think that she's not the only person that this has happened to in their family. And I figured out that Patricia, uh, Patricia Gucci, who is Alexandra's mother, she has a memoir. And I will be reading this memoir. I actually have it on my, it's on my way from Amazon right now. I will be reading it. And once this uh, court case updates, I will be talking more about it. Or I might just do a video just on the book. Let me know in the comments what you guys prefer. But Patricia, awesome, because people swear it just got ghetto in 2022. No, back in the day, 
Oh, it used to be messy. So Patricia is the side baby of Gucci, okay? Patricia was not even introduced to the Gucci family until she was about like two or three years old, right? And I'm getting all of this from an interview that I've watched of her. I don't like spoiling memoirs for myself. I like to read them myself, so I'm still gonna read it. But I'm getting all of this from an interview. You know, my, my birth uh, was a secret for the first few years. Um, but yeah, and of course, um, unfortunately after my father, uh, passed away before he sold his shares. It, I was placed under a gag order for 10 years. So I would have probably told my story a little earlier. So she is a side baby, right? And then when she became two or three, Gucci let, uh, addressed her, brought her into the family. Let's just say that. So we already have a culture, a very um, patriarchal family structure of this is not right. But the man of the house is saying it, so we got to do it. I've also peeped a really inappropriate relationship when it comes to Aldo Gucci that both Patricia and her mother shared, like uh, internalized misogyny that they shared. They both got a kick out of the fact that the wife, when the wife found out about their little family, Aldo told the wife to mind her damn business. And they just thought that was hilarious that Bruma or Bruna, I always mess up her name, excuse me, gets pranced around um, all around Europe and everywhere else as a wife of Gucci. All the other heiresses of Gucci accept them. Like, it's really interesting. And with that type of, you never know what's going on, you know? And if that's the type of culture that um, Patricia was brought up on. I, I moved through my young days, let's yeah. say, with all the changes of, of where we lived with, you know, acceptance. Yeah. This is how it's gonna be. Yeah. So when she told me about my brothers, I was excited. I thought this is brilliant. Because Patricia's mama was okay with being a side chick. She was, she was fine with that. You get what I'm saying? From what I'm seeing, all right? I'm waiting on her memoir. But from what I'm seeing, she was very okay with being the side chick. Her child had the last name Gucci. No pun intended, it was all Gucci. I don't know what happened to Patricia, but I, I could already imagine that Patricia just desperately would want to be accepted amongst these upper class people, you know? So God knows what she went through and how she was programmed growing up. This is Dr. Nick. What I wanted to get out there is for parents, especially mom y'all please please be mindful of the things that you program into your children be mindful that the things that you are putting into them that you're saying to them uh that you're calling them that you are insisting that they are or are not is are things that they take on into adulthood and those things stick with them and then you have end up with somebody that's 35 years old that thinks they're stupid because that's something that you call them for, you know, 15, 20 years of their life. So, and that's just a simple example. It goes way deeper than that. So I just, as a therapist, I want to encourage those that have children now to be mindful, be more mindful of um, what what the input into that child is because it's just like a computer program you you are the programmer to you or to that child you are god so you are programming you are putting everything they look to you for everything that they should do or not do you got patricia raising alexandra alexandra is a gucci but you also got to think by the time alexandra's in the picture Gucci has sold off to Caring, right? That's how you pronounce it? Caring, back in the 90s, 93 to be specific. Oh, and little update on that. Yeah, their creative team is just pure trash. I mean, the message is pretty obvious at this point. They're trying to get some shock jock in the worst way by using children and exploitation as props. And I do give kudos again to Alexandra for calling them out on that. Like, it's really gross at this point. The actual family Gucci has not had anything to do with anything since then, right? Despite them not being involved in the brand since then, they take the use of their name very seriously, okay? 
they don't want the Gucci name involved in any more controversy. There's already enough. And they do not want anyone with the Gucci name involved in any more controversy. With the murder for hire, stuff like that. Very interesting. And I think Lady Gaga did a movie and like they threatened to sue her about it. Um, because at the time that this lawsuit was going on, Lady Gaga was in a movie. So moving on back to Alexandra's case. So Alexandra initially filed this in 2020. Of course, the mother and the grandmother uh, said that they did not know that she was getting abused and that they only found out when she was 22 and that, yeah, they just didn't know. And that as soon as she found out, and by the way, the person that was abusing Alexandra was a stepfather. And she also made it known that the stepfather was cool with everybody in the Gucci name because you got to remember this is just a it's they're kind of like distant cousins kind of so it's like you kind of I could see that they're just getting in where they fitting in and they were just trying to make everything look peachy keen at the expense of Alexandra's innocence and her sister you know um and they, they just denied it they deny 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 uh the man who actually is accused of uh, abusing her is hiding out in Italy and is acting like he doesn't even know anything about the accusations. Like he never heard of it, but you lawyered up. Okay. Some years go by because that's just how these things go. And now we are in 2022. And as of August, the judge did say that when it comes to Alexandra's mother, Patricia Gucci, and her mama, her, her mama, uh, Gucci side bit from back in the day, they will be moving forward with those claims that they knew. They thought that because they tried to push to throw that out. Her people tried to push to throw that out. Like, no, it doesn't matter if because he isn't in the family. The stepfather, he's not a Gucci. So, yeah, we could we could annihilate him. We could flame him, distance him. Right. But in reality, if you admit that you guys also knew that is another saying on your legacy. People are already starting to put apples and oranges and stuff together with this caring situation in Balenciaga. But another uh, fact I forgot to mention is that the sister who is like, oh no, I'm not about to snitch. She is currently working on a luxury, um, ba a bag band with bag band, bag brand with Patricia Gucci. So I also want you guys to realize just because they sold the rights to their stuff to um caring in the 90s does not mean that they don't have their own brands doesn't mean they're still not doing their own things within the fashion space or within these rich upper class spaces to where they're still among these rich members of societies who have these appetites so it's like even though you're not in the fashion world you still give a damn about your name right i remember when the whole um gucci blackface mask thing happened a lot of them spoke up about it because it's like hey that's my name you know that's your name that's your family name you're going to care i really am praying for alexandra and i'm gonna um keep up on this case because i really want to know how this is going to be ruled especially because you know, a lot of places in the U.S. <clears throat> will not allow you to uh, pursue your abusers because of statutes of limitations. So I'm going to be really interested to see how this turns out. I will be ordering uh, Patricia's book just so I can get an another inside on the family. You know, as of now, the last thing the judge said was as of December, they are still trying to find him so that he can defend himself. Because as of right now, it looks like it's about to go into default. Um, yeah, they need he needs to bring that ass. He needs to bring that ass and he needs to say what happened to him. Um, and I'm just going to warn you guys right now, I'm about to put some trigger warnings because I'm about to get into these court files. So trigger warning, essay, all of that. I also have my own history, so I'm not going to go in deeper than I feel comfortable. So don't worry about that, but I am, it's going to be mentioned. So this is your warning. So these are the details in the lawsuit mentioned, um, that mention, um, Alexandra's mother and grandmother and kind of hint on their involvement or how maybe they could have known. And this is why I think the judge allowed her to proceed with this. So according to Alexandra, when she was a child, um, the abuse started before her other sibling was born. And it would start off by her having nightmares, running into her mom's bedroom. And of course, her husband would be in the bed as well. And he would take advantage of her in that compromising position. Um, 
he would often wear like robes and stuff and try to, you know, do little stuff to flash her in, in, in intimate settings where the mom would be around, where Patricia would be around. Um, another thing that Alexandra says is that Patricia used to hit her and sometimes strangle her, causing her stepfather, her abuser, to come and quote unquote rescue her. And while playing this role of protector, he would take her away and do whatever he would please, right? Um, then when Alexandra was about 16, her grandmother, she says her grandmother straight up asked her, hey, is anything going on? Just flat out, is anything going on? And when she told her grandmother, yes, her grandmother then responded, you need to keep it a secret and not tell anyone. And this is all alleged from Alexandra. She looks at you like, are you crazy? Be quiet, don't you? You know, she gets angry. Literally, my daughter can, can, uh, can you know. Then the abuse continued up until she was attending a boarding school. And at that school, she did confide in a friend about her situation. So that's a witness that could pop up at some point. After school, she then returned to live with these people. Uh, you know, Patricia and her husband, where bro still is doing this to her, even though she is obviously she's reaching adulthood. That is when he also encouraged her to use substances. She did hint that, you know, she did use substances to cope. After, you know, dealing with all of this, she confronted her mother and her mother, just like her grandmother, told her to stay silent. That's when they just ultimately sent her off to rehab to shut her up and just go to therapy and come to terms with things according to alexandra her mother's words i remember i keep saying how pick me patricia and her mother are to be gucci's all they will care about is to avoid at all costs what could be perceived as a scandal that could tarnish the gucci name and potentially cost them millions Alexandra believes that Patricia also, I don't know if you guys have peeped by the subtle hints, but her abuser is a producer. He's a very powerful man in the industry. Um, she believes that her mother has also invested, her mother Patricia has invested money into his music. And that's why she's even more scared because she's scared of it all falling back on her high end luggage line that I told you she's also in with Alexandra's sister, Victoria, right? So it's all about image to the older generate, the older Gucci generation of the Aldo women. What does the company mean to you now when you look at the name and you see it, what do you think? <sighs> well, I've seen it go through quite a lot of things mm -hmm. and, and all pretty interesting and all very good for the company, of course. I mean, the name carries this incredible, Everybody loves Gucci, and I'm very happy about that because it would have been sad if it hadn't happened, Absolutely. if it had gone the other way. So she also said some other stuff um, about how Mr. Ruffalo is working with children, and she just is really nervous about um, him continuing to work with children. And like I said previously, the sister um, does not want anything to do with any of this anymore. Uh, she was not expecting... Uh, the any Gucci family members to be named, uh, i.e. her mother Patricia, her grandmother Bruna, who is basically Gucci royalty in their eyes. So she wasn't expecting any of this to happen. She's not denying, no one is denying that this man did something. They just don't want them to look like they were okay with it. You get what I'm saying? To protect the name, but it's like, you're kind of telling on yourself. So it's looking like this is going to be playing out in public court because the sister is going to bring, um, you know, defense to her mother and her grandmother. And she's even talking about like a childhood promise that her and her sister made to never tell. So there's no way that, um, you know, she could know. But then Alexandra also has instances where she accuses her mother and grandmother of being borderline abusive. Uh, to the point of essay. It may not have been on the level of the stepdad, but definitely, um, you know how you could abuse somebody without, you, you, you guys understand, I'm not trying to get too into detail, but this definitely looks like it's about to play out publicly because 
nobody is settling anything the every her family is straight up saying that all this girl wants is for them to settle so she can get an early inheritance and all alexandra is saying is she wants to make sure that this dude gets charged because he's around kids still and she wants her family to be held accountable because she wants to do something with the gucci name that is good um i mean what do you guys think so yeah i will be keeping up with the case i'm still gonna read the book um as of now all the mom is saying is basically i can't find the quote but just to paraphrase it's basically on some i was not aware i would not consent to this uh to happen to my own kid um it's all his fault it has nothing to do with me i was not aware and um yeah that's pretty much it i don't know how they're going to prove i i wonder what alexandra has like does she have proof that her mom knew like i'm really interested but if it does play out in the public eye, I would be even more interested because, again, these people are very private when it comes to that type of stuff, um, especially after the huge scandal and then the Lady Gaga incident. Um, but, yeah, I will be back. I will be back. Um, and I'm also still, I also ordered the, the Mariah Carey memoir as well because I've been talking about reading that and I still haven't and I need to. So, um, yeah. Peace, everybody. Stay safe. Make sure you guys are watching your kids, watching what your kids are watching. Check their phone, you know, because um, I know you guys think it's everybody's job on the Internet to protect your kids. But it is your job to protect your kids. Just be careful, guys. Mama, we'll get lost. Mama, grab the code and keep the block hot. Drive up, open the door, fall in my hand, her find us. We playing hot seat with the passports. What the fuck we at? Open the collar, gotta remind us. Yeah, the luggage is piling. I need a close to waste. So many stinky sit in my wallet. Look like a folding chair. The corner, yes, I'm light on my body. Thought I flooded the yellow boat again. Tune to your tile. Look on me, bowling that chill. I was Switzerland. Trapped with my bitch. Never kiss a dog. She let me run like a bitch.